there was a group of teens that hadn't been heard from after their scheduled return time from a camping trip. A coworker and I head out in the general direction the teens had set off in. We'd been hiking for most of the day and seen nothing. We're about 35 kilometers into the woods at this point when we start noticing odd things. Sticks carved like spears stuck into the ground. Weird carvings in the trees. A child stuffed animal hanging from a noose up in a tree. This place was nowhere near any roads and it wasn't on the regular trails people would go on in the area. The really eerie thing was that everything was freshly carved. Somebody had been there within a couple of hours of us and made these things. Mind you, we're still looking for these teens. We kept on hiking and eventually made camp for the night, still kind of on edge from what we had seen earlier, but we settled down anyway and go to sleep. We get up with the sunrise, hoping to cover more ground before it gets too hot. We pack up the gear and get ready to go, when I notice a bit of shirt that had caught on a small tree and ripped, along with some shoe prints. We were thinking, great, maybe we're close by to the teens. Then, a radio call comes in. The teens had just been found 20 kilometers east of us, and they're calling everybody back. All those weird things we had seen from the day before came flooding back into my mind, and we wasted no time hiking out of those woods. I once led a trip to the top of Mount Sterling in North Carolina. It's a tough climb to get to the top, and about six miles from the nearest road. I was leading a group of eight middle school kids and had one co-instructor. We were camping out at the top of the mountain, and it was a beautiful night with a full moon. The kids and the other co-instructor went to bed in their tents. I chose to spend the night in a hammock that night. I was really into a book I was reading, so I stayed up and read until about 10.30 p.m. I turned my headlamp off to settle in for the night. Everything around me was rather bright from the moon, and from the position I was in, I could see down the trail we had hiked to get to the top. I laid there, enjoying the scenery, and then noticed something moving on the trail. Bears are common in the area, so I perked up. As it got closer, I could tell it was a person. We were in the middle of nowhere, and there was someone hiking up the trail, with no headlamp or any gear. I was just frozen, watching this person move closer to our camp. They arrived at the top of the mountain where we were and just stopped. I watched as what appeared to be a man surveyed our camp. I really could only see the outline of him. He stood there for what seemed like 30 minutes but may have been only 10. He then turned and sat down under a tree facing our camp. He was sitting up in a way that I knew he wasn't trying to sleep. He just sat there staring at our camp. I had no idea what to do. I decided to wait it out. I waited, just staring at the man while he stared at my camp. This went on until about 3.30 a.m. Then he stood up, took a moment to survey my camp a few minutes longer, and then went back down the trail he came up on. I, to this day, have no idea what that was all about, but it really freaked me out. I was paranoid that we were being followed for the rest of the trip. Some friends and I were doing some night fishing on the James River. We were sitting along the shoreline with a nice fire going, accompanied by the usual idle talk and a few beers, when suddenly everyone just stopped talking like a switch was flipped off. We were all staring across the river and felt as if someone or something was staring back. It was a very uneasy feeling to which some of the group tried to shake off with the typical macho humor when suddenly a blood curdling sound erupted from the other shore that froze everyone in their tracks. This sound was unlike any other I had heard and it made every hair on my body vibrate and tingle. The only way I can describe it 
is it sounded like a wild person with no language skills being gutted alive. No words, just this high-pitched blood-curdling scream. Nobody moved or said a word. We all just sat there fixed in our stare when just as suddenly a second scream was let loose with even more force than the first. By this time, several of us were sprinting to our trucks that were parked within 20 or 30 feet and retrieving various firearms. We all sat there quietly with our eyes fixed staring toward the opposite shore, watching the light from our fire reflecting off the rocks. Hours later, we packed it up and left, feeling very unsettled. We never did figure that one out. One sunny weekday afternoon, I had dirt biked up an old mining road. It gained a couple thousand feet from the valley floor towards one of the ridges of the Cascades. When the road gave out near the bottom of a high basin, I put on my backpack and started off cross country toward the ridge. It was still heavily forested, old growth and old cut, fading in another thousand feet into those scraggly windblown ones near the top. About 20 minutes in, and about half a mile up from me, near the tree line, I heard this weird thumping sound. It was very odd, so I stopped to listen carefully. It sounded like a big solid branch was being whacked against the solid tree. I use the term solid because the hits were powerful. One or both of the pieces of wood were hard and dry. The wood resonated and rang on impact as dry wood will. I couldn't get over the power though. It sounded like someone was swinging a 4 inch post. Weird, right? Well, it gets better. This someone sounded like they were trying to communicate. The thumping had a very complex and well defined pattern. And here's the weirdest part. The thumping signal occasionally became very rapid, like what a drummer could do if they were noodling around with a stick. but. I swear it sounded like a 4 inch pose was being treated as lightly as a drumstick. I listened for maybe 5 minutes, just fascinated with this sound, this code, and the power of it. Then the drumming suddenly stopped, and I kind of woke up to the fear of this unknown thing out there. I had my pistol, I had my bear spray and my knife. I really only fear cougars, and even then, I figured they'll have a bad day trying to take me down. Still, the silence as I stared into the forest ahead seemed loaded and I turned on my heels and left that valley. That place and that experience gave me chills and that high valley won't see my shadow again. I read stories about some of the native peoples around here having valleys that they just wouldn't go into. I can now easily understand how these legends get started. I'm a wildland firefighter with the Forest Service. Not my story, but from an old supervisor of mine that I believe completely. The setting is 2004 or so, Hell's Canyon area of Middle Idaho. His crew had been working all day on an emerging incident and were going to be working through the night as well. Being the assistant superintendent of the crew, second in charge effectively, he was out ahead scouting on an ATV. He was working his way down a logging road that had not been used in some time when a bobcat or a lynx, it's been a few years since I heard the story, appears in the middle of the road but doesn't run away as they usually would. The thing stands there for a good 10 seconds, screams at him and scampers up a tree not 5 feet off the road. He finds this odd but not particularly unsettling. Just a half mile or so down the road, he finds a small cabin. Also odd, as this is federal land and no private structure should be there. Upon investigation, all the windows had been boarded shut tight and someone had done a good job of doing so. The door had been punched out and secured to a hole drilled into the log frame by a chain. Someone did not want anything getting in 
or out. Peering through the hole in the door, he can see that everything in the house is upset. This has him kind of unsettled, so he hops on his ATV and heads back up the road. Well, here's where it gets really interesting. Right where the bobcat had been, now stands a Native American woman in a badly tattered nightgown and bare feet, just standing there. He yells at her, asking if she needs help. She just screamed at him, the same scream as the cat before, and climbs right up the tree, faster than any human has a right to be climbing. Obviously, he nopes out of there as fast as he can. Now, I would not believe most people that try to tell me something like this, but this was a serious man that did not fuck around about many things. He was dead serious the two times I've heard him tell this story, and I 100% believe that he saw what he saw. I'm a ranger at Yellowstone. A couple weeks ago, I was exploring the Lamar Valley, about 11 miles from the nearest road, and even further to the park boundary. There, in the middle of the trail, was a perfectly severed deer head. No blood, no raggedness at the severance. Perfectly intact. This is weird, because I've seen wolf and bear kills, and I used to find cougar kills in South Dakota with radio tracking, just after the cougar made them. This was not any of those things. The head was completely uneaten. Eyes, tongue, everything intact. Even the ravens hadn't touched it yet. No scat. Right smack in the trail. But again, no blood. Even a human doing it made no conventional sense. It was a doe, so it had no antlers. Plus, why leave it in the trail? Whole thing even in broad daylight, gave me chills. Just an ocean of waving grass, bison calmly grazing, and a perfectly clean deer head right on the path. The scariest experience I had as a backcountry park ranger in Washington State was being stalked by a cougar for a day and a half. I was hiking up an unpopular trail up to an old shelter and had that creepy being watched feeling. I had seen fairly fresh cougar scratches and scats along the trail, but that's pretty common up here so I wasn't worried at all. That night I camped at the shelter, which only had three walls and a roof. I felt uneasy all night and hardly slept. At one point, chiding myself for being paranoid. I arranged my emergency foil tarp around my sleeping bag, so at least I could hopefully hear something if it approached me as I slept. The next day, I found fresh scat and scratches on the trail I had hiked in on. About a mile past the shelter, I found a mostly eaten deer and some dense brush off the trail. Cougars often keep kills stashed throughout their territory for later snacking. Now a cougar won't usually tangle with a human, but here I am. A 5 foot tall, 100 pound sack of flesh and bones, at least 13 miles out from any other humans. I decided to cut short my 3 day trip and hot footed it out of there. The last 2 hours of hiking through dusk in a dense forest was the most hair raising hike I've ever had. I didn't know I was capable of being that hyper vigilant. The oddest thing I've ever found in the woods was an abandoned camp right next to the trail. Camping outside of designated campsites is a big no-no, and I was surprised as all get out to walk around the corner one day and find a tent set up directly next to the trail. The trail ran along a nice stream and was a very tranquil spot. Inside, I found a cloth sleeping bag, some dirty clothes, lots of food, like big cans of SpaghettiOs and what looked like some leftovers from a refried beans and rice dinner, and a teddy bear. Everything reeked of cigarette smoke. I was hesitant to confiscate everything and leave the individual out there with nothing, 
But I did take all the food and pack it up in a secure food storage box along the way back to my cabin. I left a note explaining where I had taken the food and that they needed to move camp. I was unable to return to the tent for two weeks. It was basically untouched when I returned. Some trail crew folks had checked it out and let me know, but that was probably it. I packed up the rest and hauled it out. I spent some time poking around the area, but never saw any other signs of life. It was obviously someone who was not prepared for camping out in the back country, judging by the food, equipment, and the teddy bear. I just don't know. Everything, clothing, gear, etc. indicated just one individual. It was very early in the morning, around 2 or 3 a.m., and I was in a very open area, waiting for my boss to return with some equipment. As I was waiting, I got that feeling like I was being watched by something that didn't want me there and had some intent on harming me. I stood up and looked around. The moon was very bright that night, and I could clearly see all the way to the tree lines, probably 50 yards on both sides of me. Nothing around. I calmed down a bit and took my pack off to get my drink out. As I opened my drink, I heard this whooshing sound flying through the air from behind me. It was like the sound that a stick makes if you throw it overhand. I literally dove out of the way with my bag falling to the ground and my drink flying through the air spilling as I jumped. I recover from my dive and take my radio out of my bag to call my boss. I say, I'm not trying to freak you out or anything, but I'm on my way back to the shop. I just had something thrown at me. As I'm talking to him, I'm looking around on the snowy ground for anything that could have been hurled at me. There was nothing on the ground but snow. I had no idea what the hell was going on at this point. My boss replied, I've already got a head start on you. I'll see you there. He sounded out of breath, like he was running. I gather my stuff and start hauling ass back to the shop. I get back and I meet up with my boss. He's pacing back and forth in our shop freaking out. I get him to calm down and he tells me that he was on his way back up to me when he got the same feeling I got. He said after he got the feeling, he stopped to look around and heard something clearly two-legged start walking towards him, barely crunching in the snow. Then, he said it started running at him, but there was nothing in sight. All of the sounds of movement stopped, and he froze to listen for a few seconds. Then, he said a hot breath was hitting the back of his neck, and he proceeded to freak the fuck out. He said he ran the whole way back to the shop, and about halfway back is when he heard me on the radio. The crazy part about the whole thing is, the area we were working has several burial mounds in the woods from Native Americans. Apparently, there also used to be an altar of some kind, made out of stone, that was buried during a construction project a few decades ago.